नमस्ते वेलकम बैक टू द नेक्स्ट मॉड्यूल ऑफ आर कोर्स प्रैक्टिकल मशीन लर्निंग विथ टेंसर फ्लो दिस इज द लास्ट मॉड्यूल ऑफ द कोर्स वेर वील डिस्कस अबाउट स्केलिंग स्ट्रैटेजीज फॉर टेंसर फ्लो मॉडल वील कवर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड ट्रेनिंग ऑफ टेंसर फ्लो मॉडल्स इन दिस सेशन सो लेट्स फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड वाई वी नीड टू डू डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड ट्रेनिंग ऑफ टेंसर फ्लो मॉडल्स so often we have models which are complex which have very large number of parameters and also we want to train these models on a very large data sets so far in this course we have written models that usually get trained on a single machine in order to do distributed training there are certain changes that we need to do in the tensor flow code the distributed strategy is designed in such a way that there are minimal code changes so when you actually uh, distribute when you actually train tensor flow model in a distributed manner you will see that there are not many changes that are required in the code that we already wrote let's understand why we want to do distributed training of tensor flow models so we have a situation where we have a very large data set and we have a very complex model to train and let's say we have a machine with multiple gpus if we do not do distributed training of tensor flow model what will happen is we will not be using all the resources that we have the model will probably get trained only on one of the gpus so here there is a typical situation where we have resources but we are not able to use it so if you if you want to use all these resources we have to specify how the training gets distributed across these gpus there could be another situation where you might have a cluster of machines and each machines have different number of gpus so this is device number 1 in the previous module we already studied how to identify each of this gpu so we said that we'll have a device id and gpu id so the first gpu will be identified as device 1 gpu 0 from device 1 from device 2 this particular gpu will be identified as device 2 gpu 1 let us give them numbers 0123121203 for example this particular gpu will be identified as device 3 gpu 3 now we'll have to see how we can use this infrastructure that we have for performing distributed training so there are clearly two different parameters that we need to consider one is the hardware platform on which we want to distribute the training so we might have bunch of gpus and we might have tpus tpus are specialized hardware developed by google for training large scale machine learning models tpus are very similar to gpus except for certain parts that are not required for performing high end computations tpus are generally 
order of magnitude faster than GPUs. So, we might have GPUs or a TPU cluster and good, good news here is that we can access GPUs and TPUs uh, from Google Colab. We can also access GPU and TPU machines in a large number through cloud providers like Google Cloud. So, hardware platform is, is one aspect and second aspect is the training strategy. So, before getting into training strategy, let us try to understand what will happen in each of the GPUs. So, we have a very large amount of data and we have model for which we want to perform parameter estimation. So, the problem that we are trying to solve here is training of machine learning model. By training, we mean you want to estimate parameters of the model. You may recall from our earlier discussion that the parameter estimation involves the following things. One is the loss function and second is optimization procedure. So, what we do is we initialize parameters randomly or through some intelligent initialization strategy. After initializing the parameters, we run a loop and inside loop what we do is we first find the predicted value. Okay, so, we use model dot predict for the training examples with the weight vector that we have initialized here. And then we calculate loss as some function of actual value and the predicted value. And we know in case of regression, we use least square error as a loss function, whereas in case of classification, we use cross entropy loss as a loss function. And once we find out the loss function, we calculate the gradient of the loss function with respect to the weight vector. So, we will perform these three steps in distributed manner. So, these three steps are distributed and finally, what we do is we update the parameter value based on the gradient and we use some learning rate. So, this is the parameter update. So, what we do is what a data that we get, we distribute that data across the available GPUs. So, let us try to understand how we can do this on a single machine. On a single machine, so 
Let us say we are doing this distributed training on a single machine having multiple GPUs. So, first we distribute the batch of data to all the GPUs. and the model graph is already present is also copied to the GPUs and we calculate the gradient of the loss function in each of the GPUs and then what we do is we use an algorithm to collect all the gradients and perform the weight update. So, we use all reduce strategy to do the weight update and the updated weights are made available to each of the GPUs. So, here all the GPUs are working synchronously. So, this is called as synchronous training strategy. And here we are mirroring data on each of the GPUs. So, this is called as mirrored strategy. So, if we generalize this to multiple machines exactly the same strategy, it is called as multi worker mirrored strategy. So, in multi worker mirror strategy what we do is let us say these are different machines. that we have so we distribute the data We distributed data across multiple GPUs. The variable and the model graph is replicated across GPUs and each of the GPU performs the computation of gradient and this gradient is updated through some multi worker all reduce strategy and and the weight update is performed and those weights are again copied back to individual GPU in the cluster. So, TensorFlow handles all the complexity of the communication as well as failure of the nodes internally. So, programmers do not have to worry about any of the aspect of the distributed computation if we use the TensorFlow library for distributed training. So, this is multi worker mirrored strategy. There can also be a single machine strategy which uses
which uses central store. central store for weights or for parameters. So, here there is a central store that is holding all the weights and these are our GPUs. So, what we do here is we take the data We replicate it across GPUs. GPUs perform the gradient calculation and in order to do gradient calculation they read the values of the weight from the central store and then gradient is combined from all the devices through all through all reduce strategy and the update is made in the central store and then the values from the central store are read in the next epoch by each of the GPUs. This is called as centralized strategy, this is also synchronous strategy. We have one more strategy that involves multiple workers and some of the workers will behave as masters let us edit this part some of the workers behave as masters. Some of the workers are used to keep track of parameters of the model and these machines are called as parameter servers. So, one parameter is kept on one parameter server and all the machines they perform the gradient calculation and the weights or the parameter is updated on the respected server. This is called as parameter server strategy and TPU strategy is also a mirror strategy where instead of GPUs we can think of replacing GPUs by TPUs. So, let us summarize this. So, there is a synchronous versus asynchronous training. In synchronous training all workers train over different slices of input data in synchronous manner and aggregate gradients at each step. In asynchronous training all workers are independently training over the input data and updating variables asynchronously. Typically synchronous training is supported via all reduce and async training is supported via parameter server architecture. The second axis is the hardware platform, user may want to scale their training onto multiple GPUs in one machine or multiple machines in a network or cloud TPUs. So, in all we have 5 strategies, there is a mirrored strategy, there is a TPU strategy, there is multi worker mirror strategy, central storage strategy and parameter server strategy and we looked at each of these strategies through illustration a few minutes ago and let us look at what kind of strategies are supported in TensorFlow 2.0 through different APIs. So, we have Keras API, we can write our custom training loop or we can use estimator API. So, Keras API supports mirrored strategy, the TPU strategy is planned in the release candidate of 2.0, multi worker strategy has got experimental support, central strategy also has got experimental support, parameter server strategy is planned post 2.0 for Keras APIs. Custom training loop has 
experimental support in mirror strategy and TPU strategy, whereas multi worker mirrored and central storage strategy are planned post 2.0 release candidate and there is no support for parameter server strategy as far as custom training loop is concerned. The estimator APIs have limited support for all the strategies. Let us look at how we can use the distributed training with tf.keras API through a concrete example. So, concretely tf.distribute.strategy API provides an abstraction for distributing your training across multiple processing units. The goal is to allow users to enable distributed training using existing models and training code with minimal changes. So, here we will use tf.distribute.mirror strategy in this example. This mirrored strategy does in graph replication with synchronous training on many GPUs on a single machine. Essentially, it copies all of models variable to each processor and then it uses all reduced strategy to combine the gradients from all processors and applies the combined value to all copies of the model. Mirrored strategy is one of several distributed strategies available in TensorFlow and we looked at the other strategies in this session a few minutes ago. So, let us import all the dependencies. Let us download the MNIST data set. We will create a mirrored strategy object through this statement. The mirrored strategy will handle distribution and provide a context manager to build our model. The context manager for a mirrored strategy is tf.distribute dot mirror strategy dot scope. Let us find out the number of devices that we have. We have one device with us. So, let us build input pipeline. So, when training a model with multiple GPUs, we can use extra computing power effectively by increasing the batch size. In general, use the largest batch size that fits the GPU memory and tune the learning rate accordingly. So, we have batch size equal to batch size per replica into the number of replicas in sync from the strategy object. We will normalize the data. and we apply the scaling function on each and every data point in the data set. Then we shuffle the data set and then we batch with the batch size set before. We do not perform shuffling on the evaluation data set. We apply scaling on each and every data point in the data set followed by batching operation. Let us create a Keras model in the context of strategy scope. So, this is uh, one difference uh, as uh, when you want to do distributed training. So, this Keras model is exactly the same Keras model that we have been using throughout the course. We have used this same Keras model for single machine training. Now, the only change that we do for distributed training is we define this model in the scope of a strategy. So, we start with with strategy dot scope and we define model within this particular scope. We will use certain callbacks, we will use tensor board callback for writing logs for tensor board. Tensor board allows us to visualize the graphs, then we will use model checkpoint callback for saving models after every epoch. And we will also use learning rate scheduler callback for scheduling learning rate to change after every epoch or batch. So, for illustrative purpose, 
we add a print callback to display the run learning rate in this notebook. So, let us set up the checkpoint directory to store the checkpoint and give the checkpoint prefix. Next, we define a function for decaying the learning rate. So, for first two epochs, we will use 0 0.0001 as a learning rate. For third epoch until seventh epoch, we will use some other learning rate. And for every other epoch after sixth epoch, we use even lesser learning rate. Then we define a callback for printing learning rate at the end of each epoch. So, we write on epoch end event, we capture this particular event and in at this event at the end of epoch, we print the learning rate that was used for the epoch. So, if you want to learn more about callbacks, there is a guide available on the TensorFlow website that tells you how to write custom callbacks for tf.keras model. So, we put all callbacks in the callbacks list. So, we have used three inbuilt call callbacks and we have implemented one more callback for printing the learning rate at the end of each epoch. We train and evaluate model exactly like we are doing before. So, we call fit function in the model you can see that the model is getting trained. So, you can see that after 12 epochs, the model has reached accuracy of 99.64 and you can see that we are printing learning rate at end of each epoch. So, initially the learning rate was 0 0.001 and after fourth epoch, it was reduced and we can see that after seventh epoch, in eighth epoch, it has gone further down. As we getting closer and closer to the minima, we are taking smaller steps in the direction of the gradient. Let us see how checkpoints are getting saved. So, we perform the directory listing on the checkpoint directory and you can see that there are multiple checkpoints that were saved. So, after every epoch, we are having a single checkpoint. So, there are total 12 checkpoints stored for 12 epochs for which we trained the model. Let us check how model performed. For that, what we will do is we will load the model weight from the latest checkpoint from the checkpoint directory and then we will calculate the performance of the model by calling the evaluate function. So, you can see that on the evaluation set, we achieved 98.64 percent accuracy. Let us look at the log directory. This is where we have stored logs that can be read through TensorBoard. We can export the graph and the variables to the platform agnostic save model format. After the model is saved, we can load it with or 
without the scope. So, we specify a path for saving the model and we use export underscore saved underscore model from the experimental version and save the model in the specified path. Let us check the content of the saved model directory. And you can see that the model has been saved in the saved model directory. So, the model has been saved to saved underscore model dot pb file. Let us load the model without the strategy scope. So, this is an unreplicated model that was loaded from the saved model path. After loading the model, we compile the model and perform the evaluation on the model. And we can see that we achieved the same accuracy as before. Let us load the model with strategy scope. So, we write with strategy scope everything else remains the same. We have changed the name of the model from unreplicated model we have changed it to replicated model and So, when we evaluated the model, we again achieved almost the same accuracy. So, this is an example of how to use distributed training strategy with tape.keras API. So, here we use mirrored strategy for training Keras model on MNIST data set. Let us try to see how to use the distributed training strategy for custom training loops. So, we have seen that custom training loop provides a way of extending tensorflow functionality. Here we demonstrate how to use distributed training strategy with custom training loops. We will train a simple CNN model on fashion MNIST data set. So, fashion MNIST data set has 60,000 training images if you may recall each image was of size 28 by 28 and there were 10,000 test images of size 28 cross 28. So, let us import the required libraries. We are using custom training loop to train our model because they give us flexibility and a greater and a greater control on training. Moreover, it is easier to debug the model and the training loop. Let us download the fashion MNIST data set. Let us create a strategy to distribute the variables and the graph. So, let us recall how the mirrored strategy work. So, first all variables and model graphs are replicated on the replicas. Input is evenly distributed across replicas. Each replica calculates the loss and gradient for the input it received. The gradients are synced across all replicas by summing them. After the sync, the same update is made to the copies of variable on each replica. So, let us create a strategy object and this strategy object is of mirrored strategy. We can check the number of replicas that are in sync here. So, we have a single device for our training in this case. Let us build the input pipeline. Let us create database, let us create the data sets and distribute them. 
So, we use the data set dot from tensor underscore slices for creating the data set. We shuffle it and then we batch according to the batch size specified over here. Later, we distribute the data set across replicas. We create a model, we define a function to create the model. It is a CNN model. We create a checkpoint directory to store the checkpoints. Next, we define a loss function. Normally, on a single machine with one GPU or CPU, loss is divided by the number of examples in the batch of input. How do we calculate the loss while using the distributed strategy? For an example, let us say we have 4 GPUs and a batch size of 16. One batch of input is distributed across the replicas. In this case, there are 4 GPUs. So, each GPU receives 16 inputs. The model on each replica does a forward pass with, it, with its respective input and calculates the loss. Now, instead of dividing the loss by the number of examples in its respective input, which is 16 in this case, the loss should be divided by the global batch size, which is 64. And why do we really do this? This needs to be done because the gradients are calculated on each replica, they are synced across replica by summing them. So, let us see how to do this in TensorFlow. So, if you are writing a custom training loop, we should sum the per example losses and divide the sum by the global batch size. So, we define a scale loss where we divide the loss by the global batch size or we can use tf dot nn dot compute average loss which takes the per example loss, optional sample weights and global batch size as arguments and return the scale loss. If we are using regularization loss in our model, then we need to scale the loss value by the number of replicas. We do this by using tf dot nn dot scale underscore regularization underscore loss function. Using tf dot reduce underscore mean is not recommended. Doing so divides the loss by actual per replica batch size which may vary step to step. This reduction and scaling is done automatically in Keras model.compile and model.fit function. If we are using tf.keras.losses classes, the loss reduction needs to be explicitly specified to be one of none or sum. Auto is disallowed and sum underscore over underscore batch over underscore size is also disallowed because currently it would only divide by per replica batch size and leave the dividing by the number of replicas to the user which might be easy to miss. So, instead we ask the user to do the reduction themselves explicitly. So, with strategy scope here we set reduction to none. So, we can use So, we can do the reduction afterward and divide by the global batch size. So, we define sparse categorical cross entropy loss with reduction set to none. We compute the loss using the loss object, we supply labels and the predictions and we reduce and we return compute underscore average underscore loss where we take per example loss and we average it using global underscore batch underscore size as specified over here.
let us define the metrics to track loss and accuracy. So, we again define this metrics with strategy dot scope. So, here we are using the mean as a metric for test loss. We also use sparse categorical accuracy as another metric for training accuracy and test accuracy. And we can use dot result to get the accumulated statistics at any time. Let us define the training loop. So, we define the model and optimizer under strategy dot scope. So, we create the model through create underscore model function, we define the optimizer and the checkpoint object. And under the strategy scope, we define a training step. Our training step uses a gradient step that records the forward computation and the loss computation, and then we can get gradients with respect to the trainable variables of the model in the gradient list. Then we apply these gradients on the trainable variables and update their values. During the test time, we apply the forward computation, we supply images to the model and we get the prediction. We calculate loss using the loss underscore object method that takes actual labels and predictions and then we update the test loss and the test accuracy based on the labels and prediction here for test accuracy and test loss is updated based on the loss that we compute over here. In the strategy scope, we define a distributed training step and distributed test step, we are using TF functions over here. So, this is where the training is happening. So, we are running for certain epochs and in every epoch we are performing distributed training, we are accumulating the loss and then calculated training loss over here. Then we are also performing the distributed test on the test data and then we are saving the checkpoint every second iteration. So, at the end of the epoch we are resetting test loss training and test accuracies. So, let us understand how to restore the model from the latest checkpoint. The model that we checkpointed with tf dot distribute dot strategy can be restored with or without a strategy and we can use the model to perform the inference on new data points. This is how we restore the model with the restore method on the checkpoint object. And you can see that after restoring the model without strategy, we have accuracy of 91.04 percent and we had test accuracy of 90.25 percent at the end of training the model. So, in this session, we studied how to use distributed training on tf.keras API and on the custom training loop. We use mirrored strategy for synchronous 
training of the model in a distributed fashion. Apart from synchronous mirror strategy, we have other strategies and if you are more interested in learning about them, there is a distribution there is a distribution strategy guide available on the TensorFlow website. I would strongly encourage you to go through couple of collabs for multi worker training. The challenge with multi worker training is that we will have to set up this multi worker training in a cluster of machines or on cloud. So, if you are interested go through the collabs for the multi worker training and try to set it up on cloud for getting the practical experience. With this session we concluded our course. Hope it was a great learning experience for you to learn practical machine learning with TensorFlow 2.0 with us. Dhanyavad.